माय नेम इज संदीप भाटिया असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग एट राजकुमार गोयल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी गाजियाबाद सो इन अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स माइक्रो कंट्रोलर फॉर मेडिट सिस्टम हैविंग कोड के सी जीरो सिक्स वन वी हैव सीन द वेरियस इंटरफेसिंग डिवाइसिस वी हैव डिस्कस्ड आई एस पी आई एंड आई टू सी इंटरफेसिंग इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर एंड वी हैव सीन हाउ वी कैन इंटरफेस द एस पी आई डिवाइसिस विद द ए डी सी एंड डी डी आई कन्वर्टर्स सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव सीन डैट थ्रू टाइमिंग डिस्क्रिप्शन वी हैव डिस्कस द डिटेल्ड डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ थ्री थ्री जीरो फोर सो इन टूडे लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस सम न्यू टॉपिक्स डैट इज द पी सी ए टाइमर प्रोग्राम एर काउंटर अरे एंड वी हैव विल स्टार्ट विद द वास्ट ऑफ टाइमर्स सो दिस बेसिकली दिस सेशन इज डेडिकेटेड टू द वास्ट ऑक एंड द पी सी ए टाइमर दिस इज द पार्ट वन लेक्चर बिकॉज इन फर्दर लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस द पी सी ए टाइमर इन डिफरेंट मोड्स सो वी हैव आल्सो लेफ्ट विद द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एम सी पी थ्री थ्री जीरो फोर वी विल डिस्कस इन द लास्ट स्लाइड सो दीज आर द टेबल टेबल ऑफ कंटेंट्स वी विल डिस्कस इन टूडे लेक्चर फर्स्ट वन इज द टाइमर्स एंड काउंटर्स इन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर वट इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ टाइमर्स एंड काउंटर्स डैट कैन बी यूज इन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर वी विल स्टार्ट विद द वास्ट ऑफ टाइमर हाउ इट डिफरेंस डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द अदर टाइमर्स एवेलेबल इन द मार्केट वट आर द वेरियस एप्लीकेशन ऑफ वास्ट ऑफ टाइमर after that we will study the pca timer we will start with the pca timer we will see what are the different modes of operation of pca timer uh, what 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 is the block diagram of pca timer we will discuss in our further lectures and after that we will see uh, what is pca timer and counter mode what are the, there are basically there are two uh, modes of operation of pca timer c mode and the c count we will discuss in our further lecture and then the last slide we will see uh, the applications of mcb 3304 uh, that uh, we have not discussed in our uh, previous classes so let us start with the vast of timer so basically uh, uh, sorry let us start with the timers in microcontroller because for vast of timer we need to understand what is the difference between the timers and counters why we use why we are using timers and counter in our uh, in our um, in microcontrollers so basically timer what timer it do timer basically as the name implies it uh, counting the pulses it's, it is basically uh, used to generate the time delay so it is a specialized type of clock which is used to measure time intervals so basically timer count the internal clock pulses of the system and the counter uh, counts the external clock pulses of the system for example we are taking the example of a robot we have build a robot and uh, we can say that after few step, uh, steps after uh, uh, for uh, let us take 10 step after 10 step it will take right turn and again uh, after three step it will take left turn so the counter will count its sequencing its uh, operations and after uh, we can say that after 10 second or uh, 15 second it will take left to right turn and uh, here the timing com timer comes into the operation timer will count the pulses uh, count the operation from the 0 second 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh, so they are counting the timers and after at the 10 second they trigger the system uh, uh, they trigger the robot that it can take right or left turn so another example we can take uh, 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 for example it is 3 o'clock and at 4 o'clock we need to trigger our system we need to get the output from some system so what we will do we start the timer we start the timer at 3 o so at 3.01 minute uh, 3 hours 1 minute the timer start to counting the timer operations and at 3 and at end of the 3 uh, uh, hour and 59 sec uh, minutes they trigger the system and at exactly at 4 o'clock timer will start counting uh, start uh, trigger the system to take action so basically timers are used to counting the events they are basically uh, it operates from the uh, upwards and downwards so a timer that counts from 0 upward for measuring time elapsed is often called a stopwatch stopwatch basically count up from the 0 upward 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 second etc okay so basically it is a device that count from down count down from a specified time interval and used to generate a time delay basically timers are used to generate a time delay in any system without timers a counter uh, we cannot say that application will run uh, in a efficient manner we in every microcontroller we need some timers and uh, counter operations 
सो अ टाइमर डेट यूज द फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ द इंटरनल क्लॉक्स एंड जनरेट डिले बेसिकली टाइमर आर यूज द इंटरनल फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ द ओसिलेटर हेयर यू कैन सी इन दिस डायग्राम दैट दिस इज द क्रिस्टल ओसिलेटर क्रिस्टल ओसिलेटर मे बी वी कैन यूज अ क्रिस्टल ओसिलेटर एज वेल दिस क्रिस्टल ओसिलेटर जनरेट द क्लॉक पल्सिस सो क्लॉक पल्सिस एंड वट टाइमर ऑपरेटिंग फ्रिक्वेंसी टाइमर फ्रिक्वेंसी इज वन बाई ट्वेल्व इट इज वन बाई ट्वेल्व ऑफ द क्रिस्टल ओसिलेटर फ्रिक्वेंसी वट द फ्रिक्वेंसी क्रिस्टल ओसिलेटर इज प्रोवाइडिंग टू द सिस्टम इट इज वन ट्वेल्थ ऑफ द फ्रिक्वेंसी तो बेसिकली वी कैन से डैट मोर इज द फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑपरेशन लेस इज द टाइम बिकॉज फ्रिक्वेंसी इज इनवर्स प्रोपोर्शनल टू द टाइम एंड इन अ सिमिलर फैशन वी कैन से दैट टाइम इज इनवर्स प्रोपोर्शनल टू द फ्रिक्वेंसी सो मोर मोर पार्टिशनिंग ऑफ द फ्रिक्वेंसी मोर इज द फ्रिक्वेंसी लेस इज द टाइम लाम्स सो टाइमर ऑपरेटिंग फ्रिक्वेंसी वी कैन कैलकुलेट एट इज इफ द क्रिस्टल फ्रिक्वेंसी इज लेवन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव नाइन टू देन द टाइमर फ्रिक्वेंसी इज वन पॉइंट जीरो एट फाइव माइक्रो सेकेंड वी कैन से डैट दिस इज फॉर द एट जीरो फाइव वन बिकॉज इन एट जीरो फाइव वन क्रिस्टल फ्रिक्वेंसी इज इलेवन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव नाइन टू इन द सेम फैशन अदर माइक्रो कंट्रोलर्स वर्क सो दिस इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ टाइमर्स इन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस द कंसेप्ट ऑफ काउंटर्स इन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर सो वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द काउंटर एंड टाइमर इन टाइमर टाइमर काउंट द इंटरनल क्लॉक पल्सिस ऑफ द सिस्टम बट काउंटर काउंटिंग द एक्सटर्नल क्लॉक पल्सिस ऑफ द सिस्टम सो बेसिकली अ काउंटर इज अ डिवाइस डेट स्टोर्स एंड समटाइम डिस्प्ले द नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स अ पर्टिकुलर इवेंट और प्रोसेस अकट इट इज काउंटिंग द पल्सिस इट इज काउंटिंग द इवेंट्स सो इट मे बी अप डाउन काउंटर अप काउंटर और डाउन काउंटर सो इट इज यूज टू काउंटिंग इवेंट्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड है इट इज इट इज यूज टू काउंटिंग द इवेंट्स हैपनिंग आउटसाइड द माइक्रो कंट्रोलर सो इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स काउंटर्स कैन बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड क्वाइट इजली यूजिंग रजिस्टर टाइप सर्किट सच एज फ्लिप फ्लॉप वी नीड टू इफ वी आर यूजिंग द काउंटर वी नीड सम रजिस्टर्स टू स्टोर द काउंटर वैल्यूज इन इन ऑन टेम्परेरी बेसिस ओके so maximum count rate is 124th of the oscillator frequency but in case of timer we have seen that the uh, uh, it is the uh, the frequency it is 112th of the crystal oscillator frequency but it is basically a 124th of the oscillator frequency so more is the frequency uh, more is the division less is the time interval so counter uses an external signal to count pulses so we can say that there are two differences we have seen in timer it count the internal clock pulses of the system and counter uh, count out the external clock pulses of the system and timer uh, take 1/12th of the crystal oscillator frequency and counter take 1/24th uh, of the crystal oscillator frequency so this is the basic introduction of timers and counter we need to uh, uh, we need the basic details of timer and counter which we will used in our uh, detailed study of vastok timer and pca timer so next topic is vastok timer first of all we need to understand what is vastok what is the concept of vastok why it is called vastok timer watch dog that that is a dog which is continuously watching the uh, timer operations timer operations created by the microcontroller so why uh, some main function of a vastok timer is to reset the microcontroller uh, when it get trapped in an infinite loop or experience a software fault let us uh, take uh, any processor if a processor fail to uh, if if a processor have any software bug any uh, software error any fault it will not able to send a uh, vastok signal signals in a uh, periodic fashion so so it reset the microcontroller vastok timer after a periodic fashion let us take uh, uh, some uh, uh, we will discuss through some figures let us this is a vastok timer wtt we can call it wtt and this is the processor let us take p so in a normal execution this processor continuously sent its health condition or we can say that its uh, pro, uh, current operation uh, in a periodic fashion in a periodic fashion they are continuously sending the data uh, to the vastok timer and at one time we can say that if there is any software bug any error it failed to send a signal to the vastok timer then vastok timer send the signal to the processor that the signal has not received for example if a processor uh, need to send a signals after every one second after one uh, every one second uh, this processor need to send a signals in a periodic fashion but if a processor takes more than one second it takes 3 second or 4 second to send the data then vastok timer will 
uh, uh, watching the events and told the processor that there has not been any uh, uh, signal received. So, uh, so watchdog timer and processor both share the common clock signals. We will discuss this figure in uh, next slide. So, basically it is a hardware timer, this is a hardware timer and uh, uh, which counts up and reset the controller after a specified time has passed. So, we can say that let us take an example, uh, uh, let us take that uh, owner uh, feeding the dog every day. So, at one day it uh, forget to uh, feeding the dog, what dog will do? Dog will bark and uh, remind the uh, owner that you have not feed this day, you have not uh, provide me food on this day. So it may be any reason that uh, it is out of home, it uh, forget to uh, and it is busy in some other work. So, in the same fashion watchdog timer will work. Let us take another example that uh, in our home uh, when a stranger come, what our dog will do? Our dog will bark and uh, give a signal that someone has come. So, in the same fashion in our microcontroller system watchdog timer work. So, watchdog timer is available in enhanced version of the microcontroller. In uh, 8051, they, uh, we have seen that there is uh, no watchdog timer available, the, the, uh, it works on the normal execution. But in advanced microcontroller in MSP4304, etc., uh, the, the concept of watchdog timer is used. So, basically, in enhanced uh, microcontrollers, watchdog timer is used. So, during normal operation, the running program has a periodically clear the counter so that it does not reset the microcontroller. So, basically, in, at a normal operation, during, uh, during normal execution, as we have seen that processor, what processor will do? It periodically, in a periodic fashion, it uh, does not reset the microcontroller. Okay? So, to avoid a reset, what we can do to avoid a reset? We cannot do, we, uh, the watchdog timer will do to avoid a reset and application must periodically reset the watchdog timer before the interval elapses. Before that interval elapses, it, in a periodic fashion, it has to reset the watchdog timer. It has to send the reset signals to the watchdog timer. So, this is like a kicking the dog or uh, feeding the dog. If you kick the dog, what dog will do? Dog will bark and uh, it will uh, run. So, in the same fashion watchdog timer will run. So, you can see here uh, figure that if we are kicking the dog, if you are kicking the watchdog timer by the processor, it will reset the system. So, let us discuss in uh, more detail. When the program, when a program have a software fault, software bugs, it failed to execute, it has some error, it can uh, have a software loop, software fault. So, watchdog timer, it is represented at WDT, reset the controller. It reset the controller when the microcontroller has some fault. So, it may be either a standalone, it may be either a uh, uh, built into the processor itself. In uh, uh, further slide, we have uh, we will see uh, how many, uh, what types of microcontroller available, external watchdog timer or internal watchdog timer, externally available or internally built into the system. So, watchdog timer automatically reset an embedded device that hangs because of a software and a hardware fault. If any system has a software and a hardware fault, watchdog timer reset the microcontroller. So, let us take its, uh, let us discuss its uh, working. Uh, so, this is a, a microcontroller, we can call it as a processor, this is a watchdog timer. So, in a normal execution, what the processor will do in a, a periodic fashion, processor will send the reset pulses to the watchdog timer. If there is a software bug, if there is a software error, the processor failed to send a reset pulses to the watchdog timer. Then what processor will do? Then what uh, watchdog timer will do? Watchdog timer will send a timeout signal to the, to reset the processor. It told the processor that we have not received your uh, re, uh, reset signal. So, so, here you can see that both the watchdog timer and the controller share the common clock signals. So, when the watchdog timer will send a reset signal to the processor, processor will send a restart signals to the watchdog timer. For example, you can take your mobile phone, you are using mobile phone and uh, when, a, uh, when a software hangs, software fault, what will you will do? You will restart the, your phone. In the same fashion, you can restart your laptop. When, what will happen? Uh, how it works? It works on the, ba on the basis of watchdog timer. Watchdog timer will continuously watch the uh, normal execution of a processor and when the software fault occur, it reset the system. So, uh, there are other examples, we will take further applications. 
so the working uh, we will discuss uh, working in more detail the main pro, uh, program has a loop that is constantly goes through performing various function there is a nor, uh, in normal execution there is a loop which is continuously occurring we, okay so second point is the watchdog timer is loaded with an initial value greater than the worst case time delay through the main program loop worst case time we can say that if we uh, if a loop has a 4 second operation, 5 second operation, worst case we can take it as 10 second to 12 second. Okay. So, each time it goes through the main loop, each time the watchdog timer goes through the main loop, it reset the, uh, it reset the system. Okay. So, if a software fault occur, if the software bug occur, what, uh, what um, processor will do? The main program, the, the, the main application which is running into the processor, do not get back to reset the timer before it can down to reset the processor. So, in this way, watchdog timer can detect a fault and corrective measures can be taken by it. We have seen that example in a mobile phone that if an application fail to uh, run uh, uh, normally, then what watchdog timer will do? Watchdog timer will reset the system, restart the system so that its uh, normal execution can be done in efficient manner. So, there are two types of watchdog timers available. First one is the external watchdog timer and the second one is the internal watchdog timer. As the name implies, we will see in the coming slide, external watchdog timer that is available externally to the processor, external watchdog timer. Sorry, this is processor, this is watchdog timer. So, this is externally available to the system. But internal watchdog timer has a built-in circuitry. It has a built-in circuitry in most of the processors. So, Watchdog timer in most cases use a general purpose register, it is controlled through a software. Basically, watchdog timer is a hardware timer, but its operations can be used using the software. In further uh, MS, MSP4304 uh, microcontroller, we will see the detailed description of the watchdog timer, how it can be used in a MSP430 microcontroller. In second unit, we will discuss. So, uh, there are two types of external and internal watchdog timer. Let us discuss, discuss its applications. Uh, I have taken three applications, there are more applications. So, application in mobile phone, we have seen that uh, if the display is off, at a periodic fashion, uh, it, uh, 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 what happened that you are using mobile phone and uh, at uh, 4 to 5 seconds, you are unable to touch your screen. What will happen? The screen will off. No, no, if the no interaction take place between the uh, between the user and the mobile phone, then the screen will off. So this will done by the watchdog timer. Why it is uh, used? Because to save the power consumption. So watchdog timer will increase the efficiency of the system, so that power saving can be possible. Another example we can take uh, take that is application in temperature controller. In temperature controller, if it takes no action to switch off the current within preset watch time interval, the current is switched off and warning signal is raised, indication of controller failure. How it works? If in a temperature controller, if the uh, if there is no operation, then it will switch off the system so that uh, uh, un unnecessary power will be uh, which is wasted can be uh, utilized, can be saved. So it is failure to switch off the current may burst a boiler in which water is heating. We can take another example, software, if the software hangs, we have seen that if the software hangs, uh, so what we will do, uh, we, uh, the watchdog timer will reset the system, will uh, restart the um, system. Okay? So, this is all about the watchdog timer. Now, we will study another enhanced timer that is PCA timer. PCA stands for programmable counter array programmable counter array. It is a enhanced version of the timer. So, the programmable counter array provides enhanced timer functionality while requiring less CPU intervention, intervention than the standard 8051 counter timer. In our uh, uh, 8051, we have seen that we have used two timers T0 and T1. They are 16 bits and for, uh, but my 8051 is a 8 bit, we have divided into the 8 bit high and 8 bit low. So, in a similar fashion, we can say that PCA has two modes also, two time, uh, it is 16 bits, so it works on the two modes, we will discuss that. So, without, a, uh, without less CPU intervention, this enhanced timer will uh, provide more functionality than the 8051 microcontroller. 
so it advantage is that it includes reduced software overhead and improved accuracy it has one of the main advantage that it is reduced software overhead what is software overhead it can uh, at less time it can handle large instructions it can have a faster execution it will works in efficient manner in less time so it uh, basically it pca consists of a dedicated it has a basically a 16 bit timer or counter it is basically a 16 bit timer and counter and it works on the five 16 bit capture compare module it has it works on the basically five module we will discuss so it has a 16 bit timer counter and we have to work uh, partition into two modes uh, to uh, to basically two register 8 bit register ch capture high and capture low we will discuss further in detail so basically it has works on the five modes rising or falling edge capture software timer we will discuss uh, one by one high speed output or pulse with modulator mode and a watchdog timer mode watchdog timer mode works on the module 4 only but other uh, timers works uh, may work on the module 1 so watchdog timer work on the module 4 only we will discuss in detail so this is the block diagram of pca timer here you can see that it works on the five module module 0 module 1 module 2 module 3 module 4 okay and the pca timer is of 16 bits so what we will do what our uh, 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 what we need to uh, but our processor can works on 8 bit of data at a time so what we will do we will divide into a ch and cl we will divide this 16 bit timer into a 8 bit timer 8 bit high and 8 bit low so it works on the five modes each mode works on the 16 bit each each mode module have uh, 16 bits of data okay so there is a pin associated with each of the module module 1 is associated with the pin number of 1.3 p 1.4 p 1.5 p 1.6 and p 1.7 what are the these pins these are pins are available in the 89 ls lp 81 rd2 pin in the previous lecture uh, you can see that in the pin description of uh, 89 lp 81 rd2 microcontroller there are po port 1 available uh, port 1 port 1 it has a 8 pins and out of 8 pins 5 pins are dedicated for the uh, pca timers so it works on the cx0 cx1 what is the meaning of cex0 c means capture external timer capture and compare external timer similarly for module 4 it has a p1.7 that is capture and compare external timer 4 so it is associated uh, module 0 is connected to p1.3 cex0 and in the same way module 4 is connected with the p1.7 cex4 so we will discuss this in detail so pc timer will work on the two two modes c mode and it has two register c mode and a c cone we will discuss in further uh, our lectures the pc timer it is a free running 16 bit timer consist consisting of uh, register ch and cl we uh, have seen that we are dividing the operations of the 16 bit pca into ch and cl so it is a uh, free running 16 bit timer so pca timer is common uh, time base it has a common time base common time base signaling and it has five modules and can be programmed to run at one twelfth of the oscillator frequency and one fourth of the oscillator frequency it can also work on the one fourth of the oscillator frequency it has a timer zero overflow or the input on the eci pin we will discuss what is the eci pin we will discuss in our next slide so basically pca timer counter source uh, the source for the uh, this pca timer is determined from the cps and cp as 0 bits in the C mode. We, in next slide, we will discuss what is C mode and what are the two uh, p, uh, bits available, what is the function of these two, boots, uh, two uh, bits, we will discuss in our next lecture. So, it works on the C mode mode. Let us discuss the C mode mode. Before that, we will discuss what are the, uh, what is the source for the PCA timer or counter. So, basically, it works on the four modes, uh, four modules. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. By particular bit selection of uh, from the C mode, we can trigger the our PCA timer. So, at 0, 0, it, uh, it has a 12 clock mode, it uses the 1 by 12 of the crystal oscillator frequency and in 6 clock mode, uh, 12 or basically 6 are the operating frequency. We can uh, use the 1 sixth of the crystal oscillator frequency. At 0, 1 bit selection, 
from the C mode, we can have a uh, one four of the oscillator frequency and it uses the one by two of the oscillator frequency at one or zero mode operation. It works, uh, it has a timer zero overflow and it has a timer zero overflow. So, at if both bits are one one, then external clock at ECI pin, we will see what is ECI pin in our C mode. It has a maximum rate of F oscillator divided by 8 and is a maximum rate of F oscillator divided by 4. These are basically used for the selecting the frequency. So, this is the C mode register. This is of 8 bit right from the this is MSP and this is LSP. Least significant bit and most significant bit and least significant bit we have a ECF and uh, the uh, particular bit selection is uh, done through pin number 1 and 2. It has a CPS 1 and CPS 0. Uh, 543 not available, not used, uh, and uh, 6 as a watchdog timer external and uh, uh, enable, so, uh, and it has a CIDL. Let us discuss one by one. Basically, at the MSP, that is pin number 7, it has a counter idle control. CIDL means that it has a counter ideal control. If this is 0, if it, this has a uh, 0 pin, then it will work, uh, it will works on the idle mode. It is continue to work function on the idle mode PC timer. And if the, if, uh, if uh, there is 1 at the 7 pin, it pro, uh, this, uh, th then there, uh, the idle mode operation will not work. So, after that in pin number 6, there is a watchdog timer enable, it uh, 0 here, it will disable the system and 1 here, it will enable this watchdog timer enable. So, basically you, uh, we have a watchdog timer in the hardware timer. So, uh, when this bit is 0, it, it will be disabled and when this pin is 1, it is disabled. It is uh, dash means it is not uh, reserved for future use, it, has no, it did not have any function. CPS 1 and CPS 0 basically used to uh, select the pulses of operation needed to uh, execute the PCA controller. We have seen in the previous diagram that how the bit particular bit selection of two bits uh, will provide the clock frequency for the PC operation. So, uh, particular bit selection we have seen in our previous diagram that if it here it is 0 0, uh, it dollar clock pulse is 1 6th of the clock mode and uh, it may be a 1 12th of the frequency. If it has 0 1, internal clock pulse is at 6 and it is a 1 4th of the oscillator frequency. If this is 1 0, it has a timer 0 overflow. If it is 1 1, then it is uses the external clock pulses of the ECI pin. Last is the ECF, it means the uh, counter ideal control. It basically used to, uh, 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 used to control the counter uh, operations. So, basically it has two um, bits 0 and 1. If it is as a 0, if it has a 0, then the PC counter to continue functioning during the idle mode. We have seen our in a uh, previous slide that and if it is 1. 1 bit, then it PC a counter to be gated off during idle mode. Gated off means it will not work uh, in the idle mode, S switch will remain open. Okay? So, these are the different applications of MSP, uh, I am sorry, M MCP 3304, remote sensors, battery operated system, we need to use this enhanced microcontrollers, transducer interface for tra interfacing the transducer, we need to um, uh, use the MCP3304 microcontrollers. In remote data acquisition, uh, if we are acquiring the data from the remote locations, we can use this microcontroller for audio signal processing, motor, motor control applications and numerous applications, uh, we are using M MCP3304, these are the applications. So, thank you everyone and uh, I hope you have enjoyed our lecture. So, in our coming series, we will discuss more about the PCA operations, how, what are the different modes of PCA, we will discuss in one of our coming lectures. Okay, thank you everyone.